All right, let's get into it. We're looking at the AMD calendar ratio spread, the crab anatomy of a trade. So uh, this first is the first one. one. We, we The what? The first one. Yeah, the first one. I'm sure we'll have more. Uh, so this one was a ratio. I didn't have the defined risk on the upside. So what I did was the opening trade. I was looking in the June monthly expiration at 57 days to go till expiration. I was buying the 95 call, so closer at the money call. You can see the stocks trading at about 91. Bought that 95 call. I sold two of the short calls at the 100 strike in the May 29 or the May 29 day expiration. So, um, you know, same setup of you know long a further out of the money or a further expiration closer at the money short multiple of the shorter duration further out of the money options so you have some potential intrinsic value you have that diagonal type upside while also having extra extrinsic value going to zero quicker than that long option so pretty standard setup did it for a cheap debit debit of a dollar 40 here the ratio aspect of this means that you're naked one extra call right so You've got you, one of your calls, your short calls at the 100 strike is covered by the 95. That is a defined risk portion of the trade. And then you've got that extra short call, the 100 strike call, which is a naked position. If you want to do the, the more defined risk crab, you would be going and buying a further out of the money long option. Let's say the 110 or 120 option in the May monthly expiration that defines your risk on the entire position um, and gives you that more of like a butterfly risk profile. So this one's more of a ratio profile. My break even on this, I just kind of pegged it at 90, maybe a little bit of downside, you know, protection via that short option, but you really need the stock to go up. Uh, that's, that's the case with most calendars, diagonal spreads. You know, you don't have a ton of wiggle room on these positions. I put the max profit here at around five bucks because that would be the max intrinsic value there minus the debit of a dollar 40 plus some extrinsic value in the short in the uh further dated long option puts you at about five bucks so that's kind of just where i i put those at there's nothing scientific on those calculations i just kind of eyeballed them and did it from my own perspective so the adjustment i made uh happened about four days later the stock drops about four or five bucks uh i take that the two contracts that I was long or that I was short, I buy those and I sell one of the 95 strike calls in that same May expiration. So it's now got 25 days to go till expiration. I'm buying two, selling one. And that adjustment is a roll down, of course, but I'm rolling down to one contract versus the two that I had started with. So I'm removing that naked position. I'm removing that that added buying power that I was using. I'm co collecting roughly the same amount of extrinsic value because I'm doing this for an eight cent credit. So essentially, this the breakdown of this trade is I'm selling one for the same cost of buying two of the, the further out of the money strikes. That transaction takes off a little bit of risk because I'm now not naked. But the caveat is that you lose that intrinsic value potential. You lose that $5 width that you can gain on the upside, that diagonal aspect of the trade. Now you're just a calendar spread, a very, very cheap calendar spread. And you've actually taken in and realized some extrinsic value, which is what we'll we'll talk about um, you know, on the next slides here. But uh, finally, uh, about a week later, so eight days, nine days here, the short call that I had rolled into is trading at 18 cents. So I just buy that call back. We've, we've talked about this before of like, you know, why cap your potential upside? Although the, the potential upside is a low probability now because you see the stocks at 81, you know, why cup, cut, uh, cap your upside at 10 cents or 15 cents or something like that? Does it make sense to do that? For me, it doesn't. I buy back that, that call. I'm now just naked long the 95 call with 44 days to go till expiration. You can see the stock has dropped you know, 10% to the downside. It's trading at 81. Now I need that reversal back to 90. 
And, you know, I, that would be like kind of my scratch point over the next couple of weeks. Luckily, we had the crazy move in AMD the next day where the stock went from 81 all the way back to 90 at a pop in volatility. This call went from, you know, a dollar up to four dollars and change. I closed out of the trade and took took the profits. Of course, we'll look at the, the hindsight of that as well. But, you know, this is just kind of a one that worked in my favor. But the general risk on the position was super super low at a dollar fifty debit to hold it for forty four days. Yep. And one thing to note with this eighteen cent debit buyback, you just never know what's going to happen with these stocks. And keeping the short on for eighteen cents, sure, you might be thinking, well, there's a low probability that this is going to be hit. I might as well just keep this on, keep that extra eighteen cents. But the problem is, if it does have a big move in your favor, like in AMD or like in Netflix having it on just costs you money because you get that big reversal and all of a sudden 18 cents turns turns into a dollar 80 very quickly so yes. it's think about it as the same as like would you sell this to open would you sell an 18 cent option to open and the answer is always going to be no uh yep. so think about it that way too yeah all right, so here's our visual just for the trade. You can see we started, stock was at 91, had the two calls further out of the money, further down the line. I rolled down to that calendar spread. That's where they're on the same strike. Stock goes down to you know the mid-80s. It comes back up. Uh, and then I close out of the trade, and you know we get that down, that big down move to 81. That's when I close out of the of the. Uh, short option, the 95 strike short option. Then we get this massive rally back all the way back of V bottom all the way back. And that's when I closed out of the trade. Now I stopped it there and gave everybody the rest of the chart because obviously had I held it, it would have been even more profitable. You can see the stock is now trading near 110, 105 ish, you know, hindsight 2020 type thing. You look back and you're like, oh, shoot, I missed out on another five bucks. But it's important to look at just what happened with this trade, which is what we're going to look at on the next slide with the long option. Mm -hmm. So when I open the trade, you can see the long option on the 20th trading around four to five bucks. I probably, you know, was I was kind of near the top tick of the day at like 502, I think was my cost. But you can see, you know, we had a pretty steady down move in the value of that option, right? This is the long option. So you can see over the next week or so, we got as low as, you know, $2 and then back up to $4. And then that big move down, the the option was trading at about a dollar, right? So the net trade, and if you remember through all my adjustments of rolling down the short call, I collected a tiny bit of extra premium. Uh, my whole trade had a net cost at around $1.50 total at the end of all the adjustments. At this point, you got to kind of say to yourself, okay, am I going to close this trade, which is just the long call option now? Am I going to close this out for a dollar of extrinsic value and, and just realize a, a 50 cent loss, a $50 loss? You know, that's kind of the question that you, you have to ask yourself. And for me, it's like, why would I do that? Because I've only got a hundred bucks in risk. It's a manageable amount of risk. I want that upside. You know, I'll take the chance over the next couple of weeks. We, of course, get this move the next day, and you can see the candle here. You know, we go from that dollar, because I think it happened like middle of the day. The stock did not open up uh, at that point. It happened like, you know, while I think while we were on the show or right before the show. Anyway, the option starts at a dollar. So, you know, I'm just sitting on my hands. You get this massive move, 10 points to the upside, nine, 10 points to the upside. The, the option goes to $4 and change, basically right back to where I bought it. And I've just got this naked long on a couple hundred dollars in profit. I closed it out. Of course, you know, over the next two weeks, you get this massive rally to the upside. But there were a couple points through that move higher where this option wasn't more valuable than when I closed it. The next day you can see it got back down to two, $3, you know, that's a hundred, $150 swing. You could see, you know, May 13th and 14th, it got down to, you know, $5, like basically flat at those points throughout the duration. It's really, you know, now that it's gained so much intrinsic value that it's gotten much, much more valuable. But I'm just trying to point out that the the hindsight trade, it's you, you have to consider the other stuff that happened along the way as well. Indeed.
And to your point here, <clears throat> why close it when it's only worth a dollar or so? Your risk is only a dollar going forward, and you can you can realize this big move to the upside. Uh, now, this is this happening so quickly was not planned, but you could see this move happen over the course of a couple of weeks and just get you back to where you open the trade. So, risk reward is always going to skew in your favor when you see losses on long options, just because you can only lose so much more going forward, and you can get everything back. Uh all right, and here's a breakdown of the transaction. So, you know, one thing that I was pointing out that I've mentioned a couple times throughout the segment is, you know, the long option that I'm trading, I'm trading it at basically the same value, right? I'm not looking for that option to go from from or at the time of closing, I wasn't looking at, at it uh, looking for it to go to ten dollars or eleven dollars, which it's trading at now. I was hoping it would get to three, four dollars, and I could take a little bit of profit out of here. It went to, you know, four dollars and thirty-five cents. Basically, it got back to flat. The value that I captured here, a lot of it came from the short option. So you can see, you know, when I'm buying or when I'm selling two of the original transaction, I traded those at one eighty-one. When I'm going to buy them back, buy those two contracts back, they're trading at 77 cents. So I've realized $2 and change, $2 and six cents of extrinsic value. That's buffered my trade. That's why my trade was basically flat when I made that adjustment. When I rolled down to the 95 strike call and did that and turned it into a calendar, I was basically a scratch because that down move in the long, in the stock and the long options value was offset by the two short options that I sold. And you can see it right there, 181 to 77. The two options that I'm closing at 77 cents are trading for you know $1.54 total. I'm selling one option at $1.62. So I'm keeping the same amount of extrinsic value on the table through the next 25 or so days that were left on that trade. I'm keeping the same extrinsic value, but I'm removing the naked risk to the upside. So now it's just a calendar spread. You know, you're using less buying power. You can use that buying power elsewhere, um, et cetera. You can see buying the call, you know, the, the 18 cent call, I'm just taking that, that upside cap off the table. It's a small debit. Again, this, you know, just taking off value that's already been realized. I sold it at 162. It's now at 18 cents. It's time to go. And, you know, at the end, we got bailed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. But this trade, it's important to understand this trade didn't move all that much through the duration of this, this, through all the rolls, the 20 or so days that I was in it, it didn't move all that much. Yeah.